Hello, uh, welcome back to this lecture series on NDT. This is the third lecture. Uh, in the last class, uh, we just started our first topic on NDT, uh, which was on uh, diet penetrant testing. And in that, uh, we discussed about the basic principle of this particular method and then we saw what is the basis for this particular technique. Okay? So, we will uh, quickly take a recap of uh, last class what we did and then we will proceed. Okay? But uh, before that, uh, at this point in time, I should tell you that this penetrant testing is one of the earliest methods uh, to be used as an NET technique. Okay? And it was perhaps uh, used for the first time by the railways uh, for inspecting uh, their rails and fields. Okay? So, what they used to do at that point in time uh, for inspecting their fields, they used to uh, take some kind of oil uh, in a big tank uh, in which they can uh, immerse their wheels. So, they will immerse the wheel in that uh, tank which contains the oil and uh, allow some time to soak it and then after some time they will take it out and after that uh, they will apply chalk dust on the surface after soaking it in the oil. Chalk dust uh, either dry chalk dust or uh, some kind of suspension of chalk dust in some volatile liquid. Okay? So, this uh, chalk dust uh, what it will do if there is any crack or any such uh, discontinuity, it will uh, soak out or it will suck out the liquid uh, from the cracks and it will make some kind of visible indications. So, in this form, uh, uh, the railways uh, used to apply this particular technique uh, for inspecting uh, their rails and wheels to find out any defect. Okay? So, over the years, it has been improvised and today we have it in the current form okay? and that is what we have been talking about in the last class and in today's class also we are going to continue on that. Okay? So, let us uh, take a quick recap as to what we learned in the last class. So, what I said for this uh, particular method is that first you need to have weighting. Okay? So, you are, you are having this liquid dye, you are applying on a solid surface. So, it should spread over the surface and wet the surface. So, that is the first requirement. Okay? And for this, the main parameter which controls this is the contact angle theta. And for wetting to happen, theta should be less than 90 degree. Okay, this is what we saw. Now, the next thing uh, we saw was uh, the basis or the driving force uh, behind uh, penetrant testing is this capillary, which is developed uh, due to the surface energy or surface tension of the liquid. Okay. So, this is the basis for this particular method of dye penetrant testing or this is the main dry driving force, the capillary is the main driving force behind dye penetrant testing. So, this is what we saw in the last class. Okay? So, let us uh, continue on this and I have also talked about uh, the kind of uh, liquid which is used that is the properties of the dye which can be used as a liquid penetrant in this case. So, these are the typical properties that you need in a dye for it to be used as a penetrant in dye penetrant testing. Okay? So, continuing on that, there are two types of dyes. The first one is type 1. So, it is just, uh, this is just known as type 1 and type 2. Okay. 
Okay. Type 2 is the normal visible dye which is uh, normally red in color and this is what most of the time we use. And type 1 uh, is sometimes used uh, based on the requirement. Uh, this is a fluorescent dye. So, sometime you may want to use a fluorescent dye, but in that case you need to do the final inspection uh, under UV light in a dark room, in which case uh, this fluorescent dye will fluoresce and if there are any cracks or defects, uh, they will make a visible indication and they will also glow because you are using a fluorescent dye. Okay. So, sometimes uh, this kind of fluorescent dye is also used. So, these are the two different types of uh, penetrant which are in use, most commonly used as I said is the visible red color dye. Now, coming back to this method, if you see the different step, the first one as I have already mentioned in the last class is surface preparation or surface cleaning. And this is to ensure that uh, theta is uh, less than 90 degree as I would have said before also. So, you clean the surface, remove all the grease, oil, dust or any uh, scale which might have formed on the surface and keep it clean. So, that uh, it provides a contact angle uh, which is less than 90 degree and in that case the liquid will nicely spread over the surface. Second is uh, penetrant application. So, you apply the penetrant after the surface is cleaned okay. and this uh, we have talked about in the last class and then third is dwell time. So, you have to allow some time uh, for the liquid to go inside the flaws if there are any. And this dwell time will depend on the part size or the kind of uh, flaws you have, the size of the flaws and so on. So, you have to allow some time for the liquid to go inside the flaws. Okay. Now, once you uh, have done uh, this two, okay, so now you have a part, the surface of which is completely covered by a red color liquid. Okay, so, this red dye is now all over the place and if there are flaws, it might have gone inside the flaws also, but now the surface will look red because the dye has spread over the surface. Okay. So, that means at this point you cannot start the inspection unless you clean the excess dye which is spread over the surface. Okay. That means the next step would be to clean the excess dye. And this may be a bit tricky because you need to ensure that you clean the surface. In fact, the surface should go back to the condition as it was in the beginning. So, it should go back to the initial condition as it was. Okay. But at the same time, you need to ensure that uh, if there are any flaws and if the liquid has gone inside those flaws, you have to be careful not to remove the liquid dye from the defects. Okay. So, you need to first make sure that the surface is totally clean as it was. But at the same time, you need to ensure that uh, the dye which is there inside the flaws is not removed. Okay. So, that is why it could be tricky and you should do it carefully. 
and that is why a, a particular process is recommended for this that you need to follow a particular method to clean the excess dye. Okay. And these methods are uh, given some names like in terms of four letters method A, method B, method C and method D. Okay. So, these are the four uh, methods of uh, cleaning the excess dye and these methods are well established and you need to uh, follow them because as I told you this could be tricky and you need to uh, take care, you, you need to do it carefully. So, let us have a look uh, what these methods are and how they are done. Uh, first we will uh, pick this two because this involves uh, something and uh, you know uh, a particular mechanism. So, in, in cleaning the dye, if it is already not uh, water washable and that could be the case uh, many a times that the dye itself is not water washable. So, you need to render this dye, you need to make this dye water washable so that uh, you could easily clean it uh, by a water rinse. Okay. So, you can rinse it with water, you can apply a water spray uh, carefully and you can clean the entire surface. Okay. So, the purpose of uh, following this method B or method D is to make the dye water washable so that it can be removed by uh, washing. Okay. So, in that case you need to use an emulsifier which will emulsify the dye as it gets mixed with the dye and once it is emulsified then it can be easily removed by water. So, it becomes water washable once it is emulsified. Okay. So, in case of uh, method B uh, this is an oil based emulsifier. And let us see how does it work when you apply this uh, emulsifier on the surface which is completely covered by the dye. So, it, it, uh, it works uh, by a particular mechanism. Okay. So, let us uh, see that. So, this uses an oil based emulsifier okay so this is how uh, let's say there is a crack like this okay and this is your uh, solid surface okay so once you uh, apply the dye so it will spread over the surface the liquid dye and it will also go inside the crack due to the capillary force as we have already discussed. Okay. So, what I said you need to ensure that uh, this particular part which is on the surface, okay, this has to be uh, removed and the dye which is uh, inside the flaws that has to be retained. and that is where you need to be careful. So, this is in the beginning where the entire surface is covered by the liquid dye and now you are taking the help of an emulsifier to make it water washable and then uh, you are going to clean it uh, with a water spray. So, let us say now we have uh, applied this emulsifier also. Okay. 
Okay, so let's say uh, these are the dye molecules. Uh, we'll indicate uh, them by uh, red color. Okay. And now, you have uh, used an oil based emulsifier. So, we will indicate them uh, the molecules of the emulsifier by a different color. So, let us say this uh, green color is the emulsifier. So, you have applied it on the surface. So, if you see the steps in this case, the uh, cleaning step. So, the first one is uh, this is dye penetration. The dye has gone penetrated inside the flour. Then you add the emulsifier. and then allow the emulsifier to act. Okay. So, let us see what happens after that, after you apply the emulsifier. So, in case of an oil based emulsifier which is method B, the emulsifier is going to diffuse and get mixed with the dye. Okay. So, that means, uh, in between these uh, dye molecules, now you have these emulsifier molecules also. So, they are diffusing into the dye molecules and getting mixed. Okay. So, that means, uh, once we apply that, the solution of the emulsifier with the dye begins. So, solution and diffusion. Begins at this step. So, this will continue further because finally, as I said you need to make this dye uh, emulsifiable. You have to emulsify it and then you can wash it by water. So, this, this will continue. So, the diffusion will proceed as you allow some more time. So, that means more and more emulsifier molecules will be uh, mixed with the dye molecules, but uh, remember all that should happen on the surface, but not inside the flaws. So, you have more and more emulsifier molecules being mixed with the dye molecules. So, this we will call as diffusion proceeds okay. and then once uh, there is enough mixing uh, between this uh, emulsifier and the dye then the dye itself uh, will be emulsified and then at that point in time it becomes water washable. Okay. So, then uh, next you need to uh, wash it uh, with water. So, you can apply a water spray and uh, rinse it. So, now that uh, everything is mixed.
Okay. So what do you do? You now <coughs> rinse it with water. So, that uh, you can do uh, by using a water spray okay, or a water gun, because now at this point in time uh, the dye has become uh, water washable because it is emulsified. Okay. And once you do this, after this particular step of uh, rinsing with water, your surface should look exactly how it was in the beginning. Okay. So, that means it should on the surface of course, it should look like this. That means, the surface should be free of any dye and it should look as clean as it was in the beginning, but the dye should still be inside the flaws otherwise your purpose is lost. Okay. That is why it could be tricky as I told. Okay. So, this is how it should look like at the end of the uh, cleaning process, okay. at the end of the cleaning the excess dye. Okay. So, the dye uh, is there inside the floss, but the surface looks clean. Okay. So, that means at this point in time uh, you do not see anything. So, that means if you go back uh, to the steps that we have, okay, fine, but before that let us talk about uh, the other methods also. So, we just now uh, talked about uh, method B, wherein you use an oil based emulsifier to emulsify the dye, the excess dye and clean it. And in case of uh, method D, so this is uh, the last step of cleaning by method B. So, you should have a clean surface. Now, let us have a look at the method D. So, in case of uh, method D, the emulsifier that you have is water based. Okay, so, that means, uh, this can be called as uh, hydrophilic and in case of uh, method B, we saw that uh, it is oil based. So, that is why that is called lipophilic. Okay, so, this uh, water based uh, emulsifier, it comes uh, as a concentrate, so you need to dilute it. So, you could uh, uh, depending on how you are applying it, so this comes as concentrates if you are applying it uh, by dipping the part. So, the part which is covered by the excess dye, you can take it and dip it uh, inside this uh, emulsifier. So, in that case, uh, you need to uh, use uh, 5 to uh, 30 percent of this concentrate. So, you need to dilute it up to that extent. <coughs> and if you are using it by spray, then uh, you can take this in the range of uh, 0.5 to uh, 5 percent. Okay. So, this is the, uh, this is how it is used. 
and let us see once you use it uh, what happens like what we saw in case of uh, method B. So, there again uh, in the beginning uh, you have uh, the surface uh, is covered entirely by uh, the die and it is there inside the defect also. Okay, then you apply the Now, you apply the emulsifier. So, we will again indicate that with a different color. So, let us say these are the emulsifier molecules which now you have applied on the surface. Okay. So, here also uh, the emulsification will begin So, as you apply the emulsifier and allow some time or apply some more, then this, uh, this emulsification will begin. Okay. But in this case, uh, there is uh, no uh, not really like what you uh, saw in case of method D, it was complete mixing between the dye and the emulsifier and then it becomes. Uh, water washable after it is emulsified. But in this case, uh, the cleaning happens by a detergent like action. So, like how a detergent would remove dart particles uh, from a piece of cloth. So, here also the action is similar. Okay because it is a water based emulsifier. So, once you uh, let this uh, emulsification happen, then uh, it will act like a detergent and clean the surface, uh, clean the surface and remove the excess dye. So, that means as you proceed, you will have uh, less of dye molecules on the surface as these dye molecules are being removed by this detergent molecules or the emulsifier molecules. So, this will act uh, by a detergent kind of action. Okay. So, once this happens then uh, now you can use a water rinse uh, to clean the entire surface uh, like what we did in case of method B. Okay. So, now uh, at this point in time this is suitable for using a water spray and then clean the surface. So, you know there are few emulsifier and then the dye is emulsified. So, now we can use a water rinsing to clean the surface.
okay. And at the end of it, like the previous case, again it should go back uh, to the initial condition, so you should have a clean surface. Okay. And your die should remain only inside, only inside the flaws. Okay, so you still have the you know, die inside the flaw, but the surface should be entirely clean like how it was. Okay. So, these are the two methods wherein you need to use an external emulsifier uh, to make the dye water washable and then using a water spray you can clean the surface. Okay. But there are other two methods also, so this is uh, method uh, B and D, but if you see we have listed two other methods. which are method A and method C. Okay. Method A and method C are the simplest ones. In case of uh, method A, the dye itself is water washable. That means, this kind of dyes contain an inbuilt emulsifier. Okay. So, you can easily remove it uh, by uh, using water. Okay. And method C is, uh, is about using a solvent to remove the excess dye. So, in this case what you do? You take the solvent in a piece of cloth, if it is a small part you can take it in a piece of cloth, take the solvent on that and nicely rub it over the surface and clean it. Okay. If it is bigger part uh, you may want to use some other application process. For example, you can use a spray and things like that and then again you clean it with a cloth or things like that. So, these are the different methods of cleaning the excess dye because before you start the inspection, the surface should look like as it was in the beginning. Okay. Right. So, this was the fourth step of the steps that we have in this process. Okay. So, for today I will stop here and then we will see uh, after you uh, clean the excess dye. In the next class, we will see how this indication is made. I mean, after this, what is that you need to do to make uh, visible indications of the flaws by uh, sucking out this uh, dye which is inside the flaws. Okay. So, that is what we are going to do in the next class. For today, this is all I have. Thank you for your attention.